Inside the Birds is back. Welcome, everybody, to the 2022 Philadelphia Eagles season, which is officially underway as training camp begins this has begun this week. It's now season five of Inside the Birds. You and I, Adam Kaplan, so very excited about the longevity we've achieved with this and looking forward to more in the future. I know as we get closer to the regular season, we'll have even more updates on some ITB adventures or ventures, I should say, that we have going on uh, through it for the regular season. But we welcome back. We come back to this. We, you know, we, we just come off of our four part NSC East preview series with Greg Cosell, which we have done every year for the last few years. But this one really hit with a lot of um, Washington, New York and Dallas fans, of course, uh, got a lot of notoriety. So we just personally want to thank everybody for thanking us because we got great amount of feedback about um, how in depth we really went in the NFC. Thanks to Greg, Adam. I mean, there were a couple of episodes, both with Washington, actually all three teams that are not Eagles that he really went into some of the backups who he liked their tape and thought they could, you know, jockey for starting jobs uh, on, on all of those teams. And they're not household names. I mean, Greg, really went in with the scalpel and the forceps and dissected this thing as, <laughs> as well as he's ever done. Yeah, definitely. It's almost like an autopsy on the team's season from last year. Uh, and then and f- moving it forward, uh, dissecting, as you said, uh, the, the players and schemes. And it, it was really amazing. Uh, and the great thing, it's well under an hour, like 35 to 45 minutes, gets you in and out on every platform that we have, YouTube and all the pod pl- platforms. And we know as we... We always find out we get new listeners through this, which is always cool. And you, the Eagle fan, if you're that's who you're, you're listening for, and most of you are, you become a better fan because you learn the teams that the Eagles are vying for for the NFC East, a division that we've not had a repeat winner since 2004. Right, right. Amazing, amazing stats. Well, um, there's something I want to ask you about coming out of that series. Uh, but first, you know, just for everybody, be glued into insidethebirds.com. We're, we're having content now constantly refreshed from training camp. Adam, we'll get into Adam's uh, observations from what I would call the first day of training camp. Apparently, the Eagles think it's the second day because they count the conditioning test on Tuesday as some kind of day of practice. We'll get into some Nick Sirianni's comments on that. We've got some transactions that they've made already, some promotions uh, that have gone on, the coaching staff, and of course, uh, we will get into uh, the first day of practice and what that was like. You were there. So I'll have some good notes and uh, go through it all. So to, 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 real put a, to put a tie or a, a nod, I guess, or wrap up the NFC East preview that we did. For those who watch every one, they know that I asked Greg at the end of the first three, starting with Dallas, does Dallas have the best 53 in the division? He said, no. Then we did Washington. I said, does Washington have the best 53 in the division? He said, no. Then I went on to New York. He said, no. So by process of elimination, we knew by the time we got to the Eagles that Greg thought the Eagles have the best 53 in the division, which is something that, Adam, you believed. I think in the offseason, you felt that the Eagles had made enough moves to have the best 53. So here's a question I'm going to – I don't disagree, by the way. But here's a question I'm going to ask you spawning off of that. It may not matter in the end. Because injuries always necessitate depth. And if the Eagles are the deepest sure. team, that's great. Sure. Do you think the Eagles have the best starting 22 on offense and defense in the division? That's a, you know, it's funny because first of all, I didn't know you were going to ask Greg those questions. Those are great. And his responses were funny. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I, do they have the best 22? It's tough because Dallas has some really big time studs on both sides of the football. Yeah. But the Eagles, the Eagles' strength are so much – they're so much better than Dallas on the offensive line. I know Dallas has some good players. They're not as good as they used to be right. on the O-line. Right. The Eagles, who cannot compete with Dallas at wide receiver, not only can they compete, they're better than Dallas, at least on, on paper, at wide receiver. What, this is the same offense that Cosell said two years ago or three years – two years ago 
The slowest he saw on tape of all 32 teams. I know. What a I remake in that. the last two years, right? It's crazy. And I cringed when he said it. I'm like, oh, my God, if Eagles front office hears this, I know he knows those people. They probably, like, slap him. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's not like they didn't know it. I mean, I know, I know. And remember, know. they were in 12 personnel a lot more than 11 that year. Yeah, well, injury, so. right, but they also had Ertz then. But, yeah, you're right. They, they Look, they you can't say it anymore right. with Watkins, who's now a major factor. With Devontae Smith, who's, who could flat out fly, by the way. That's the thing is they need to throw the ball down, feel more to him. Yep. Uh, we'll talk about A.J. Brown in a second. Uh, you know, it's funny that you, you bring this up about uh, the rosters and so forth. The thing that I did notice at this practice on Wednesday, and I'm, I'm going to see the Giants today, is you just see so much talent on this roster. I, but then the question is on yours, how good is this talent? Like, they're very talented. But am I overrating it? Because I just, it's, it's on paper. All you could say is on paper. They look like they have the most talented roster. Mm-hmm. But when you look at the 22, is there a weakness? Yes, yeah, safety. It's, it's clearly not as good as some other teams. The, the, the kid, uh, uh, the Giants have, uh, McKinney's terrific. He, yep. He's Xavier awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cosell's guy, Cam Curl, uh, Greg uh, told us about three years ago, who's a stud, who not a right. lot of people, the Washington fans know him, but he's a stud. Eagles don't have that guy at safety. Uh, but they... And also, they don't have the outside corner depth uh, that the other, like Dallas is like almost five deep at outside corner, but they're, they don't have anybody like Slay at corner. That's, you know, that's when you ask the question, you have to go position by position and compare depth. Right. And then when you look at the top 40, that's where I think the Eagles have them because the Eagles have so much depth in the D line. Mm hmm. I don't think they're an embarrassment at linebacker anymore. In fact, I don't want to call it a strength, but it's not a weakness anymore, at least on paper. We'll see what it looks like when these guys actually have to compete next week. Yeah. They're not doing much this week. The, the ramp, this is a ramp up period. The real competition starts next week. Right. And, and then you, you, you see uh, the depth of the offensive line is really good. They actually have depth at wide receiver. They have some depth at running back. They've got explosiveness. They don't have the big guy there. And Minshew is one of the better backup quarterbacks in the league. So, okay, they don't have great depth at tight end. Well, how many teams have got two guys who could go in and play like the Eagles had Ertz? Yeah, that's not the position you're really worried about. Right. That. right. So it's, it's pretty good. You know, as I breeze through that, I, the Eagles have a good roster. I I um I crushed them last year. In fact, I looked at my notes when I used to send them to you, you know, before mm-hmm. our shows. Yep. I was pretty negative. I was surprised that the Eagles made the playoffs. I know people – don't want to give the Eagles credit with their schedule. They said they, sh- they, they weren't as good as the record. Nine, nine and eight record would show. Was that what it was? Nine and eight? Nine and eight, yes. Okay. Um, they didn't have a tie last year, didn't they? I don't think so. Okay. No. Uh, I'm not going to disagree that they're, they didn't have a good team. It's just that you got to give people credit where it's due. Yeah. They took advantage of the, the COVID stuff that Washington had when they're putting out four stringers. But you got, look, they're, it's an NFL team. They got the job, then they got in. It's a wonderful job by Sirianni holding the team together when they could have folded, when they got off to the terrible start after the Atlanta game, when mm-hmm. they went down. Right. So you just look at this roster to move this forward here. Yeah. It's, hard. it's really hard. Do you, do you see where you go, oh, well, they're not good here? Do you see anything where you, you – you No, strong? I think they're going to be very competitive top to bottom. Right? They really should be. Um, they, they, they absolutely should be competitive. And I, I'll tell you, so – I think you're right. I agree. So I, when I'm trying to figure out who has the best starting unit, best tw- starting 22, which again, I think it's more important to have the best 53. I'm not denying that, but you know, for the first month of the season, usually you tend to be healthy. So it's, it's about your starting 22. I think the Eagles have the best offensive line. Clearly. I would say Washington has the best defensive line. Clearly. Oh, by far. Talent wise, at least. Talent wise. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Dallas is the best quarterback uh, by far, in, by, by far, far in the, uh, of those three. So to me, I would take, I, I, people are going to think I'm crazy and I'm fine with that. I'm used to it. I think <laughs> Washington's 22. I think the Washington can say, we think our 22 is as good as yours, Dallas and yours, Philadelphia. And be um, fair about it. They, there the are problem areas is- where they're weak, like offensive line. They're really they're bad in the interior. Well, Chase really is actually talented. He's come back from pretty significant right. injury. Right. The, the Eagles line is so much better than Washington's. Sure. They could, they could, if, if Curtis Samuel could actually stay on the field this year, they could compete at wide receiver with McLaurin and Dotson, who we love. Yeah. 
That's a, uh, Gibson, that's a really good wide receiver yeah. core right there. Yeah. And, and Diami Brown. Yeah. There. He's oh, a, and Diami Brown. Right. Yeah. He's, he's a player. Sure. Cam Sims is, is still there as a big target. Right. Uh, Gibson and, and uh, Brian Robinson, they're very high on you heard Greg said on our show, but <laughs> Brian Robinson. Right. I which, expect uh, Car- Carson Wentz to be a better than Tyler Heineke. Taylor. Heineke. I know yeah, there's yeah. recency bias. Everybody thinks that Carson's the worst thing ever because of how the Colts crapped on him on the way out in those last two games. But as Greg Cosell pointed out, he had a good year last year. He did not he did. have a bad year. He had a bad end of the year. We, and there we, were we games where he didn't throw the ball a whole lot, but by yeah. design of the offense, but he, he was he 27 and seven when, it, when all was said and done that. Yeah. I mean, that, that was, it was really a bad year. Yeah. What happened is because of Jonathan Taylor's breakout, they weren't going to ask him to throw the ball a lot. Right. It was a leadership issue. We all know what happened. We've, we've been over this. I don't know how many times with once. Uh, that's why they got rid of him. Well, it's never a good sign when the owner buries the quarterback before he was traded and after he was traded. And then the GM doesn't defend uh, the quarterback. I mean, it's it, it, w- Wentz, it's never been about talent with him. It's about everything else. He's, he's right. got to he's got to understand uh, what, you know, it's, the funny thing is, despite the way things fell, he fell out of favor with some of his teammates in Philly. Uh, talking to some agents who have players in the Colts, Got some offense. They actually like Wentz a lot, mm-hmm. but they they were not quite aware of some of the things. Like when you when you own a business and your player doesn't work because whatever the reason is, but you want them to act a certain way in terms of leadership, and you don't get it. The players saw him a little differently than the the front office and the owner did. Mm-hmm. That got him out of there. I mean, he yeah. again third three teams in three years. The, the guy's got to wake up, right? You know. Yeah, but it's not a talent issue. So, so I think it's going to be a very interesting three horse race. I, I, yeah. I believe Washington will be in it, and we'll see what happens in December. Uh, I think the Giants will be improved, definitely I improved. Yep. I don't know if they have enough to 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 win this division, but it sort of kind of depends on how the division goes. But I don't think you're going to see a team that you know will have no shot to make the playoffs by like week seven in this division. I don't think Ooh, anybody's that, starting off one and six or two oh, and five. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think these are these are four teams that are going to compete pretty well. So uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's still not a great division top to bottom. Like if you compare the NFC East to the AFC West, it's not yeah, even close. <laughs> but, but I don't, you know, I know I've said it before. I don't see this as the NFC least anymore. I don't think it's a terrible division. So I'm kind of excited just in general about the direction that the, vi- the division is going. Yeah, you know, it's funny because after we did these shows with Greg, I'm like, I, I might have said it on our last after the Eagle show or during it with him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, this division's actually really improved after hearing Greg break down. Uh, Theoretically, yes. Yeah, I mean, it, on paper, Washington, and plus, I think let you know to not criticize. Well, I'm not going to mention any of the names other than Joe Judge, who I mentioned. Uh-huh. I've, I've mentioned Joe Judge before, where, and Greg actually mentioned it too, where. Uh, the, the new front office and new coach staff with the Giants felt like Daniel Jones was too afraid to make a mistake when they first mm-hmm. got him. Mm-hmm. And they're hoping to loosen him up a little bit and just cut it loose. But the Giants, if you look at their their, their offensive skill positions, Galladay, stay on the field. Kadarius Tony stay on the field. Wondell Robinson is a second-round picker they're excited about. Uh, the offensive line, they feel like they've got bookend tackles with Thomas and Neal. Not great in the interior. Mm-hmm. Uh you look at their defense, as you mentioned earlier, you're right. I mean, there's, there's talent on defense. They got Thibodeau, their uh, first round pick. Yep. The division from top to bottom is going to be better. But as you said, how much better it's going to be remains to be seen. I agree. I agree. All right. We got a lot to get into with training camp beginning and some of the Eagles moves uh, that they've made uh, both in the coaching staff with some promotions and some transactions. We want to remind you to check out our friends at Freestone Farms. They're clocking in with some of the best CBD at really reasonable prices. And you can get 20% off at checkout at freestonefarmscbd.com using the promo code ITB. That's ITB to get 20% off at checkout on freestonefarmscbd.com. All right, Adam, let's talk about some of these um, transactions that went on our, our good buddy. I, I feel like we've talked about Craig James so much in that great game against uh, that he had against green Bay, what in 2018, where he, you know, yeah. they, they were looking around for Sydney, Sydney Jones can't find him. So Craig James gets bang in the game. He, he gets waived. 
uh, and then picked up by Joe Douglas and the New York Jets. Um, and then, you know, they, they waved him. a wide receiver, Josh Hammond, and the offense. By the way, tackle. they just caught him real quick. Just cut him cut already. Him. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yes. All right. Maybe he'll come back to the Eagles then. <laughs> well, I think he was waived with. Um... Was it an injury settlement? No. Yeah. Maybe. it's Well, no, not on the. It was like they didn't get to that part point. Uh, that point. I think it was like the non-football injury, something, something like that. But well, that anyway, was Noah Ellis cut. too. Yeah. No, Noah no Ellis had the non-football injury also. Yeah. That, which, which, yeah, you know. That one, I know some people asked me on Twitter, um, that, w- which means it happened training away from the team. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then the, you mentioned Josh Hammond was cut, it was waived, and Jared Williams, was, these are undrafted people. Right. Over the last, either this year or last year. Uh, then they signed, oh, actually, the interesting signing, this guy I remember, Jaden Graham, who was formerly the Falcons, he was actually on their active roster for two seasons. I remember him, yeah uh spells it j-e-j-j-a-e-d-e-n lance lance lenore who's been a sort of a jer- young journeyman yep and one of my all-time favorite names because i do remember this guy from the saints not tom cameron but cameron tom cam tom yeah cam, right, cam tom, <laughs> called short, right right it's funny because i i just remember seeing him sign i think it might be like 2018 he was on the he's been on and off the saints and uh dolphins practice squad yeah but you know, my friend John Hanson loves calling Boston Scott Scott Boston. Yeah. You know, you, Tom Tom Cameron. No, it's Cameron Tom. Believe it or not, well, you just can't have on the same in this in the trenches. You, you can't have Cameron Tom and and uh, Cam Jordan, right? It just just doesn't seem <laughs> right. So you right. got to get rid of so, yeah, one. Right. So Cameron Tom, it is. <laughs> right, right, right. Not the future, potentially future Hall of Famer, right? <laughs> right, right. Now, not to speculate on anybody's injury because we don't like to do that, but it is fairly common when camp opens up to see a rash of guys around the NFL get waived with a non-football injury. Cause a lot of guys get, um, they, they, they pull hamstrings. There's a lot of soft tissue injuries that guys get training right before camp and they're going to be out several weeks and it's just not enough time with training camp now really only being six weeks, right. And three games, just not enough time for a rookie, someone like Noah Ellis, right. To then get, be able to showcase himself to a team. This happened to the yeah. receiver last year that everybody loved, right? Trayvon Grimes, I want to oh, say. Oh, Grimes. Yeah. God, you know what? He had a knee injury. I don't know what happened. The guy's never been hurt from again. Uh, yeah. Is he playing football anymore? <laughs> I know. I, I don't but, think he has. It's very, it's crazy. It, folks, if you know, let us know if you've heard, uh, if he's been with the team, because I, I have not heard his name. It's funny you bring him up. Yeah, he was a guy, everyone, all the, all the, uh, all of our listeners loved. I mean, when they signed him, people are going out of their minds because a lot have, of people emails right from people telling us like after we did a couple of our 53 man roster projections that we were absolutely insane to not have trevon grimes uh, on the 53 man well no he did get hurt though but no i know but he was probably not going to make the team i mean and like you said he's not, he hasn't even popped up anywhere yeah i don't that's weird yeah but no what happened was people really follow college football and a lot of you do yeah um you're more than uh, aware of him and he had good size didn't run all that well but he had good size um right. not on the on the pups the guys on active pup there was no active nf5 it was just three active pups two were expected tyree jackson i'm gonna explain what we know on him brett toth he's had the knee issue mm-hmm. yeah richard rogers see this would explain why they brought why they they signed um well, they signed uh, Jaden Graham, so they needed an extra body in training camp because two right. guys are down. Right. Uh, so here's what we know about Tyree Jackson. Apparently, uh, his progress in the spring was terrific. Whatever they allowed him to do in terms of running straight ahead and cutting, he felt great. Someone I know who was in touch with him said that uh, he's feeling great, look great, chomping at the bit to get, to get back, just has to get cleared. Mm-hmm. It makes me wonder if he'll be on the field in August. I still wow, think he's that a major would be. That would be a heck of a development. I mean, you and I sort of ruled this guy out for playing this year like months ago because we thought, you know, you got the ACL, you had the back injury. It's December. You're missing, right? You needed all that development and you missed OTAs. Little did we know there would be like no such thing as OTAs to miss. But <laughs> but um, the, for him to be able to, to get back on the field potentially by August and, you know, sort of try to bridge the gap, I mean, he did it last year. He bridged a big gap. So maybe there's some hope for this guy. 
Yeah, no, I'm not saying he will get on it. I'm just wondering if no, I know will, potentially because he yeah. was doing so well. Remember, he had he tore the ACL in December. Theoretically, he would have the surgery in January. Mm -hmm. I mean, nine months is December. I mean, excuse me, September. So I'll, I'll look into when he had the exactly when he had the surgery. But I just know from someone who's been in touch with him, uh, he he was doing great. So look, they the story. Look, as you just said, he was on such a roll for the back fracture. And here's the crazy thing. He came back for a couple of plays after he fractured it. After he, well, they didn't know that because what happened once he fell hard. Right. Happened right in front of me in that practice in, in August. He, he hit his tailbone because he came, leaped up for it, was running under the goalpost. And he came down on, like, on his tailbone and he shook himself off and he came back and then he left. You know, obviously, you have the testing. So you, you got to give the kid credit for toughness. It's an unbelievable story. If he ever makes it, mm -hmm. it, it's another Logan Thomas story in terms of just making it if he did. But Logan Thomas, obviously, you take it up a notch. Right. Got a nice contract extension, and it's been a remarkable story. Most of these guys who convert from receiver to tight end or quarterback to tight end don't make it. But there have been a couple who have made it, and, and Logan Thomas, obviously, is one of them. Yep, and of course, Edelman did it from quarterback to wide receiver, so that was yeah. pretty good to a slot receiver, which is sort yep. of flex tight end, although he's tiny. But yeah, no, it's not an easy thing to do. And, uh, uh, oh, and of course, on the Eagles themselves, I mean, Greg Ward went from quarterback to uh, receiver yeah. as well. Sure. All right, so we'll just keep an eye out because if he can get on the field, if Tyree Jackson can get on the field early August, I will have I will change my stance on – how much time I, I, he I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. To, to be clear, if people are quoting us, I have no idea when he's when he's going to be on the field. But I just, Correct. based on what I'd heard coming out of, uh, I'm going to say OTAs and in July, apparently he just looks good. The progress is really good. You just you you, you wonder if he can make it back this year. We'll see. Uh, oh yeah. By the way, the PUP rules have changed. Though this is important. Yes. It is funny because the I, and I don't remember why they did this. Is good though, because you remember they had the antiquated uh, reserve NFI and reserve PUP rules where you'd have to miss six games, two week ramp up, and you can play in week nine. Well, now they've eliminated that six weeks. It's four four games, and you can play after you serve the four games. You don't mm -hmm. have to have the two two week ramp up. So once again. Uh, the the I mean maybe COVID had something to do with it. I don't know, but it's a good thing. Yeah, no, that sounds like a good thing. I mean, certainly for the player who who, you know, is healthy enough to play and doesn't need two weeks of ramp up, which we've yeah, seen guys come true. back from three or four weeks out and be ready to go. Sure, that's a good point. Yeah, because that it sucks when the guy's ready to go, but you still have to serve the two weeks. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because that true. honestly, they're they're yes, you can't practice on PUP until like. You would be allowed to have the ramp up here to, to practice, but now it's really now it's here. Actually, here's a question. I wonder. I wonder if after the four weeks, you pr like I have to get this part clarified. Do you just practice, and does that mean you're on the fifty three? Because mm -hmm. in season, remember. Act, wait, in in out you you don't you count against the roster in the preseason now. But you don't count against it once you go in the regular season. That's why it's called reserve. Right. So I wonder what they do after the four week, four games. Do they – what do you do if you want to bring the guy back for a couple of days in the fifth week? Hmm. You know, just yeah. count against the roster. I, I need to get that clarified. But anyway. All right. Good stuff on that, though. That is important stuff. Because, man, they, I feel like the rules because of COVID have changed a lot. Every year over the past three or four years. And it's hard to keep up with some of the minutia on them. So that's an important one. Um, the Eagles also on Wednesday, I believe it was announced a, uh, series of coaching promotions. I believe we have reported some of these, but we'll go through them really quickly. I mean, I, I the, the biggest one, and I think we talked about this because we were asked in a, um, ask ITB episode about certain coordinators or, or assistant coaches who we thought had head coach potential or coordinator potential as their next job. And Denard Wilson his name came up because he's been, you know, he's been a scout. He's been a player. He's been a coach. Uh, he is now not just the defensive backs coach, but they added defensive passing game coordinator to his title. 
Yeah, we actually reported this. Uh, like That's what I thought. Weeks ago. Yeah, we, but we didn't know what it meant. We were just told by someone close to the situation, oh, he got this new title. This, mm-hmm. is, this is what I think why they did this. A, he's one of the best assistants. They're showing him, you know, they're showing him some love. They're, you know, when you get a title, you get more money. Even if it's the same exact job, but here, here's the big thing. This is what one league source said to me, and I, I, I believe this is the case. If Gannon gets a head coaching job next year, I would expect Denard Wilson to get some consideration to be their new D coordinator. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's possibly in play. Is there anybody happens. else because he's been with the Jets and here with the Eagles that that would pluck him? You think anyone that might maybe? That's, well, that's that's part of it. If if Gannon, think of it this way. Let's we'll, we'll move this another way. Uh-huh. Let's say Gannon gets a head coaching job, right? And Wilson doesn't get the promotion. They bring somebody else in, but because they've given more money, the only way he could really leave is if he gets a coordinator job. Right. But if he stays, they've already bumped him up and gave him money. They've showed him respect. He knows that, and he's really well liked here. Because I can tell you, the Jets were not happy. Uh, they thought they had him staying when uh, the staff was hired. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was their understanding. They really liked him, uh, and he. I, I to this day, I don't know why. He left the Jets and came to Philly. I'm not sure if he knew somebody. I know the Eagles pay their assistants really well. They're in the, the Eagles are, are, when you look at scouting department and coaching, they're, they're up there in how they, in their pay. Like they no pay doubt. people really well. And some teams don't, but they pay their assistants pretty well. That's true. All right. Um, we had also alluded to the fact a couple of weeks ago that the Eagles were kind of rearranging their front seven, front six style coaching staff that they were going to have, you know, like Tracy Rocker was the defensive line coach, but I think he was going to start to focus more so on down linemen and Jeremiah Washburn was going to focus on your, your, your outside linebacker slash pass rushers, your edge edges. rushers, which was now added to his title defensive ends outside linebackers he was the senior defensive assistant before that so now they've kind of got two guys coaching the d-line slash pass rush yeah and it's funny because if you go before that he was a director of person player personnel and was he a d-line coach too did he has been every yeah he was was crazy yeah it's, no, it was an assistant D line coach. I, I don't, I don't remember. I don't recall, but I, it, it, it's just crazy. The, a lot of you really follow Eagles closely. We've been an Eagles fan for a while. Remember his dad and how it ended. It didn't end well for his dad in Philly. <laughs> just, right. No, they love this not. guy though. Thank yeah, you. Must totally be different. Yeah. By the way, very smart of the Eagles with these new titles, like Denard Wilson being the defensive passing game coordinator, which pretty much spells out what he is. I remember they started doing this a year or two ago. And they didn't specify, you would think they wouldn't have to, but Matt Burke, if you remember, was the run game coordinator. Obviously, Matt Burke was a defensive coach and a defensive line coach also. That was his initial title. But then he started to coordinate the run game defense. But all they called, but they listed him as the run game coordinator. And we were getting constant, like, you know, messaging from people. All about, what do you? How can this defensive coach coordinate the run game? What about right, Jeff exactly. Scotland? So now they're specifying with Denard Wilson, defensive passing game coordinator. Because if they called him passing game coordinator, people would probably be like, "What? Well, how, he's a defensive backs coach. Right. What are you talking about?" So, well, what happened was this all started. Raheem Morris, who's now the D coordinator for the Rams, years ago with the Falcons, they called him. Uh, I think like pass a game coordinator or something yes, just I like you said right. and i'm like wait yeah. a minute that doesn't make any sense but yeah. then i found out what what his job is to, to decipher what the 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 passing game the, the opponent's passing game is like and how to right. break it down all that right um so yeah washburn which is what's also interesting is this guy was a offensive line coach for a while jeremiah mm-hmm. and now he's a defensive guy it's fascinating i i'm not sure and i have to ask someone who knows him like what how this came about like he's a defensive guy now yep but hey it is what it is and then the trick shot artist alex tanny i remember alex is a super journeyman quarterback man and there's those trick shot videos his brother mitch used to be the director of analytics for the broncos for for many years mm-hmm. uh, but alex got, uh, w- was the offensive quality control coach previously he's now the assistant quarterbacks slash offensive assistant so yeah they, they they like doing that they uh 
usually again it's definitely more money maybe it's five grand more ten i don't know how much more i do wonder about that but anyway uh he gets that title uh and then the funny one someone asked me this on twitter and i'm like i didn't, I didn't know this guy's on the staff but it's not the same guy not the hall of famer eric dickerson uh <laughs> no nope, again i didn't one. was not was not familiar with this guy but uh he was a defensive assistant he's now a quality control coach on Kyle offense Scudder. what's that on offense he went yes, from defensive offense, yes, assistant offense. to offensive quality yes, thank control. you yeah in fact that distinguished distinguished him he was a defensive assistant now he's an offensive quality control coach which are important they're the guy with the clipboard charting stuff yep that's what he'll be doing tyler scudder was with them last year as a coach's assistant and is now a defensive assistant and by the way this is how Matt Nagy started with, and and also I think Brett Veach. Yeah, Brett Veach as well. Yeah. I yeah, think so. James Urban also started okay. off as a coach's sure. assistant. Yeah. Sure. So, okay. so this is important stuff. I mean, because what will happen is these low, super low level guys work themselves up mm -hmm. and then through the, the chain. And in five years, they could be a coordinator. Who knows? Absolutely. All right, so that's going to round that up. Uh, we're going to get into some observations from the uh, first day or two from training camp. Obviously, Wednesdays was the first actual practice that was open to the media. First, we want to stop real quick to tell you uh, to hear a message and a video from our friends at Let's Get Checked. We thank them for sponsoring this video. Struggling at the gym? Are your T-levels dropping? Then get checked with Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked offers a wide variety of testing options, such as vitamin tests, liver tests, cholesterol, and CRP tests. They also have tests for iron, kidney, diabetes, heart, Lyme disease, sexual health, and of course, colon cancer screening, and more. Just head to their website, trylgc.com slash inside the birds to check out their full range of testing. The link is in the description Let's Get Checked manufactures all sample collection kits at their accredited facility using the world's best accredited labs and a team of physicians that reviews your orders and results, along with nurses available 24-7 to help with treatment options. Let's Get Checked is your one-stop shop for all your testing needs. Hit the link in this video description to find out more. All right, again, thanks to Let's Get Checked for sponsoring that video and letting us know about the importance of getting tested for our health. All right, so um, why don't you, Adam, kind of open, set the scene, you know, from the first day of practice, which it's funny, you're like, you texted me at the end, eh, it's over 57 minutes. And I was like, <laughs> this is training camp now, I guess, you know, and then I, yeah. even before you did, I, I sort of laughed at Nick Sirianni, because he was, so he was describing, he was asked by Zach Berman, a really good question. Why are you having a walkthrough? Closed to media walkthrough today on thir which is Thursday, which is today for people, right? When you only yeah. just ha literally had your first practice Wednesday, and Nick's like, no, 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 no. First of all, we've had two practices. He's like, we had the team conditioning test on Tuesday. Now that counts as a practice, I guess. Very oh, rigorous, God. rigorous <laughs> test. <laughs> oh, you know what? I okay, you bring that up. I, I, I'm going to find out what that exactly is. I'm very curious. Well, I, it's I've actually, it's, I know what it is. I can tell you what it's. Um, okay. So there are certain names for it. It's, I know I'm sure there's more to it than this, but it, the majority of it is um, you have to run the length of the foot. It's like 110 yards. Uh, yeah. Six, six yeah. times, I believe it is something like that. Um, you gassers, gassers. And, yeah. And you have to do it within a certain time frame based on your position. Oh, so like, it's not like yeah. wide receivers have to run it in this, and offensive linemen in this in the same time. Okay. So it's that, and then there's like sort of like these up and overs where you don't do the whole football field, but you're down, back, down, back, down, back um, a, a number of times in the same, you know, and again, within the same time frame where you flunk. So I don't think anybody flunked apparently. So that's, that's. Uh, well, that's what, by the way, it, any, anything on Rager with this thing? You hear yeah. Me? You know, I heard, I, I've just heard um, poking around from some, some sources that you remember how we've reported that he had had a really good OTAs came focused off season program came focused did really well impressed the coaches and if you remember Completely last different. year last year he failed the conditioning test That's and he, you know his his yeah. friend at um uh at TCU i think or, or no in high school had been murdered right and he was sort of grieving and wasn't really doing what he was supposed to do and but apparently a year later he had a great conditioning test con con you know continuing out the off season 
that he's had, and he's looking really good from a physical and athletic and a focused standpoint. I mean, if he could help them, because last year at this time, you know, he failed the condition test. As you, in fact, I, you had some really good notes on that last year. Mm-hmm. And, you, and, you know, you're going inside kind of what he had to go through. Well, everything's behind him now. There, there, there are no issues. He's also healthy, and he came into great, very good condition. As you said, he, he passed the test, and apparently he's doing really well. Yeah. I, I know the Eagles insist that – we know we reported this three months ago. They're not coming under any circumstance. Okay, mm-hmm. fine. But if he's on the roster – and they thought, you know, I don't know what they could get for him at this point because he hasn't really contributed in two years. Right. But here's the question. What can, what can he contribute? I understand. Look, I know in Wednesday's practice, he was part of the, the punt return team. You know, they were rotating in. He's not guaranteed to win it. To me, in the end, it's, it's going to be Covey. It's either going to be Covey or Rager. And my money would be on Covey. But let's... Let, to get on the to be active every week, and we'll get into Zach Pascal and some other stuff, right? Uh, of the the receiver rotate the receiver rotation. How's he gonna get? How's he gonna play? Like what if he doesn't win the punt return job? How would he get on the field? I agree with you. It's it's sort of not a fair fight, and hey, that's his own doing. He did not have two very good years. Although I will, you know, I think the coaching staff has not exactly figured out a way to get him the ball in in great positions for success but it's still on Jalen he's got to be the guy to catch the ball and to make things happen um you can talk about targets that's fair too I mean it just has not seen a steady amount of targets especially last year so it's hard to get into that rhythm but you're right it's not a fair fight because the top two receivers we know are AJ Brown Devontae Smith and Zach Paschal came over as a free agent signing as the teacher's pet so we know he's going to play I don't mean that um derisively either i'm just you know the coach really likes him so you we know how that works and quez watkins we've heard the coach speak glowingly of so again jalen rager is not going to be the fifth wide receiver for this team making that money being a former first round pick they they'll trade him before making him the fifth receiver so to answer your question adam is there any way he could be so good is there any way he could be so good that the coaches feel like they have to play him over Quez or Zach. Well, I mean, they, they got to get him. No, on the field. no. Quez is the three. I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. The, the first three spots are already locked up. Brown, Smith, and Watkins. There's no competition there. Right. Pascal's the four. And Pascal, let, we might as well get into some of the stuff. Like, yeah, I'm not a big observation, observation guy. So I'm more about kind of what's going on. How's the team see these guys? And right. I'll give you some stuff from practice. But I could tell you Pascal from people been around him. They don't have anybody like AJ Brown's a different type A. He's an unbelievable guy, and Pascal's a good dude. But Pascal, the word I got, the players, I know they they only did seven on sevens uh, in OTAs, and even in practice Wednesday, I guess he wasn't feeling well. But they're not calling it COVID at this point. But the fact of the matter is, there's something about him the players have said, like he's just a presence. Yes. You, you know, the guy's been through the, you know, the ringer here with the Tennessee being on and off rosters. Colts, he's did a good job filling in when he had to play. But he's just some kind of veteran presence. You, you, I now see you mentioned he's a teacher's pet. Based on what I was told, I understand why Sirianni sees Pascal this way because the players already see it. Right. And you and I talked, uh, for those of you who've been with us for a while, I mean, we, we kind of crushed the receiver room a couple of years ago. Uh, and not only that, rate. but I mean, how often did we say in the last two years that the Eagles needed an adult in the yes. room? Need, and it didn't have to be like the best wide receiver on the team. They needed a Jason Avant like guy, a steady, yeah. reliable, wise, instinctual there wide receiver who could pull yeah. the young ones together and teach them little things. He may not be as talented as them, but he's been through enough to be able to let them they they watch him. And they are they are motivated by him. And and the yeah. OTA, the one OTA I went to, the one observation I can make about Zach Pascal was he was the first guy in line for every wide receiver drill. And that, Saw that. Means- yeah, you and I were there. Yeah, you yep. and I were there. Yeah. Uh, but but AJ Brown is an unbelievable guy. The intensity fans. I mean, you saw he bought the the, the kids the jerseys in the uh, team store. It's super cool. He's just a great dude and unbelievable yep. football player. All right, so. I'll start it since we talked about you want to get started here with 
kind of yeah set the scene i mean you show up it's the first day so okay same procedure as you know for the media Uh, but there are no covert protocols for anybody players or the media although you had to fill out a form you know if you had covid you know when when the dates of your tests you know you put all that fill it out you're, you're in so I, what I, one of the things I really love, in fact, that I got to put more of these on my I, IG. I love, I'm big on nostalgia. Like they, I love the pictures they have of uh, on the fence. Mm-hmm. If you walk in, you're, as you're getting closer to getting through the gate on, on the fence, you could see Chuck Bednarik and Harold Carmichael, mm-hmm. Mike Quick, and some of the, the, pick, the, the, it is the, cool. It's just really cool for those of us who grew up here. It's just super cool. Uh, and then, you know, you, you you get in there and I knew going in, it would be a short practice. I, I thought I was thinking like an hour, 15 hour, 20. And I'll say this, it was super intense. I, I didn't, I, I didn't, I was not there for the, the uh, press conference with uh, Roseman and Sirianni, but, it, but uh, one of the reporters said to me, they said, it's going to be an intense practice today. And I guess they were, they weren't lying. I'm like, they, the thing that I really like about the staff mm-hmm. is that there's no standing around at all. You people, some people have an issue with Sirianni being the quote unquote CEO head coach. He's not really quite, I know he's not calling the place. He's super involved in the play calling. Mm-hmm. Like he's still game planning. He's just not going to call it on game day. So you got to be careful when you call him a CEO head coach. Right. But if you want to call him that, that's, you know, that's fine, but he's not, he's super plugged in. He is going station to station. He'll jump in he'll watch the receivers and make sure they're doing the right thing. He'll observe the offensive linemen. He may look at defensive backs. He may watch the defense. But he's going to – he's not just what Tom Coughlin – Tom Coughlin would do – Tom Coughlin actually would jump at the drills. Hmm. But John Tom Coughlin was not a play caller. He coached – I think he might have coached receivers in his career. He might have called plays in the 80s or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But obviously a terrific head coach of this day. No doubt one of the best. Yeah. But this is a different type of CEO head coach. He's more, he's definitely involved in one side of the football. And he also is coaching guys up and he's super vocal. You cannot miss him. He's not, he's definitely not reserved. He's the opposite of it. One of the other things I love to do, I don't know what you do when you practice, but one of the things I like to do is I like to walk around and watch coaches coach. Yep. And I love watching Stoutland. He, uh, one of the players tells me he loves, they call him that he barks. Yeah. You know, it's not that he he doesn't really curse. He's like, hey, you know, yeah. if you watch me on YouTube, he's using his hands and he's very funny. Yeah. And I watched him coach up Cam Jurgens because Cam Jurgens took the 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 one for Kelsey. Ke- apparently Kelsey's come back from a bout of COVID. And although I guess because there are no protocols anymore, I'm assuming what happens is you, you have to at least test negative so you can go to practice. Right. And so he was at practice but not working. He wore a very cool. Very cool um, bucket hat. I've really, I, you know, I don't wear Eagle stuff, but very cool bucket hat, almost a camouflage, but white and green, folks. If you, if the Eagles have in the team store, folk, I'm telling you, it's really cool. If I were an Eagles fan, I'm wearing this, wearing this thing. Nice. I, cool. I don't think I've ever worn a bucket hat in my entire life. I'm not my, a bucket hat guy. My head's too fat. Seven to five eights. I don't know if I can. <laughs> you do have a big head. <laughs> oh, thanks. No, um, I have a very small cabeza, a small head. So I think got? a bucket hat would look weird on it. Would like seven probably, and eight, seven and a quarter. Uh, no, uh, six and seven eighths. Right? What? Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, that's what I, I have a small head. Jeez. Yeah, that's impossible. It's really? not. I'm telling you, it's not. Are impossible. you an adult? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> barely. <laughs> Apparently. Um, have you read? Getting, have you heard me do a manscaped read? <laughs> I know. And what's funny? One of the guys said on the message board, "I need to do it." Uh huh. Uh, and I was like, no, well, I said, I, I said to Jeff many times, you want me to do the live reads? I'm happy to do it. I have to do it on, on uh, serious sometimes. So, uh-huh. um, but getting back to practice on Wednesday. So the thing they only, they really, everything was red zone, almost all seven on sevens, a little bit 11, 11, but mostly seven on seven. Okay. Um, so there's no pass rush yet again. It's just, well, you know what? Half of it was and half of it wasn't. But because it's not timed, mm-hmm. the, you know, well, there's no, no defensive not... line though. What do they do? They just send the linebackers or. So what they did, we'll get, yeah. So here's, okay. I'll get okay. into that in a second. We'll, we'll, when you get the defense, but like 
one of the things I liked about Hertz in this practice was, and I, mm -hmm. I talked about this in the OTAs on, on our one practice we were at. In this practice, and I'm looking for this stuff because I know I know it bothered people who observed the team last year, particularly in last year's training camp. He bailed repeatedly in training camp last year from the pocket because mm -hmm. it was a new offense for him. Okay. I, I I'm just telling you, people are gonna say I'm making excuses for Hertz. I'm just telling you, it's hard to go from offensive scheme to offensive scheme to offensive scheme every year. Just hard. Right. And the reality was, uh, part of it was because he was thinking out there. So you could just see, and I know, again, it was a very late practice, seven on sevens mostly. He wasn't bailing much. I, I, because uh, I know you noted something a couple times uh, in OTAs. Yeah, it was just one play, one snap in the OTAs okay. where, where he bailed. Okay. And I and I would say why there was no pass yeah. rush. What, what's yeah. the point of bailing? Yeah. Which is a problem, right? He should yeah. be bailing. So so he did a really good job of hanging in there. He made an incredible throw. I, I saw it. I saw it unfold because I was standing under the goalpost. They the, the cool thing is the Eagles really give you great access to watch practice. Unlike some of the teams I won't mention on here, which I'll probably mention when I go on my tour on our show. I'll mm. give you a little update from some of these camps. Some of them. You know, you're on a you're on a far field you can't really see yeah but uh this particular practice we could see a lot of it and he rolled right he waited and he saw i knew quez made a great um ba uh, back shoulder catch mm -hmm. uh where he, he turned the other way away from the defender it was an incredible catch but i calcutta made one from Minshew on the back of the end. So it was an anticipation throw. He threw nice. it while he was into his route. I mean, it was an incredible play. But okay. Hertz rolled right, waited, did not bail, did not bail, and waited till the guy crossed the face of the defender. Mm -hmm. And and I remember one of the security guards and I looked at each other like, wait a minute, did he just throw it over his hand? <laughs> he did. Threw it to the guy's, uh, over the guy's hand. It was a phenomenal throw. Nice. Um, he just was more composed. Again, it doesn't mean anything. Not really, because it's they they did some rush because I'll, I'll just throw this one defensive note in. Mm -hmm. When they ran a 34, a pure 34, the stand up outside linebackers off the ball were who you would think would be Sweat and Reddick. And the two inside backers uh, were Ed, Edwards and White. And they would rotate Davion Taylor, Taylor and Dean. And then they played there. And I, I, one guy swears to me it's not a 5-2. He goes, it's a 5-2 to the layman, but it's really a 34. Okay. He goes, look, if you play two guys over the ball, it's still a 34 because it's a three-man front. Because what happens is when you have two guys on the ball, it looks like a five-man front. Mm -hmm. But it's still a 34 with just two overhang players. He goes, you got to be careful with that. Sure. But he goes, hey, this is what he goes. He goes, you can go with that, but it's really not a 5-2, but it is, they think it is. Yeah, well, uh, I would just say, though, that last year, there was only one overhang player. And that was Jannard Avery, because Josh Sweat was yeah. playing a down line. So they would have four down linemen and Jannard Avery. So that is... Yeah, it was actually, it's funny, because they did that on, on Wednesday's practice. Uh -huh. they, did, they played four down and one overhang. They did... They did... Yeah, yeah, they did four. I'm looking at it, and, and I'm just imagining what I saw. It's not like you tape it. Right. But they did one stand up guy and, and they did uh, four down. But they don't, d d to make this perfectly clear, they don't play with five down linemen. They're not like five guys with their hand down. They don't no, do that. No, they've never done that. They've yeah, just played yeah, just, four linemen and then yeah, just to be no clear. Yeah. Because yeah. some people may be confused. They don't do that. In fact, this was done. That was done like 15, 20 years ago. Yes. Uh, well, you would see the bare front. Yes, the bare front. The right. bare front or front or is called bear claws when you have five down because you're, you're you're it's a formation where you're trying to get five really five it's not NASCAR it's completely different it's just five down linemen right but you don't see that a lot right no so you do it's only in goal line and sometimes on third and one or fourth and one they'll they'll do that but not even that frequently either uh, all right so good good stuff on Jalen Hurts there let's um, continue on to some other observations actually first let's pause real quick for a word from our great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. And if you happen to the Sky Motor Cars out there in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You will get a great deal. The and very best deal. The latest eagle to get a car from Sky Motor Cars? I saw it. 
the Kobe Dean. Yeah. Yes. Nice stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, they, they should just call themselves. See, I guess they can't for like they can't use the I, don't, I guess you can't use the Eagles name. So home of the Philadelphia football players. <laughs> <I should say laughs> like that. Home of that team a, that plays pro football in Philadelphia. Garrett Dickerson, uh, excuse me, Landon, Landon Dickerson just uh, got his car from there. Nice. Um, we know Sheldon Brown was one of the first guys years, decades ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they've done a bunch of deals. Carson Wentz for many years. In fact, I still think they have deals with him. So, yeah, it's it's the home of the Eagle players getting cars. Nice. So, speaking of offensive linemen, you brought up Landon Dickerson. Uh, Isaac Sayamalo took his place at right guard. On the first day of practice, I don't think that, that that was a surprise to you or me or anybody else. I mean, he's going to get he's going to get the best. Look. I mean, he's the best suited to play right guard. Yeah. So yeah. So it's Mylata left, who looks mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, I when I when I saw uh -oh. him at the the the, the, um, the Super Bowl, I was like, wow, he really looks like he's down. He looks like he's really in good shape. Uh huh. Because I remember when I saw him in OTAs last year, I was like, am I wrong? Does he look heavy? <laughs> And we found out he was 402 pounds. Yeah, you weren't wrong. <laughs> no, well, I, 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 it just, I try to get more insidery stuff when I go to practice. Yeah. And that's just kind of what the, 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 you know, this, this, the, the purpose of the show is. Everyone does observations. I'm more into what do we learn? Right. We observe some, but what do we learn about what are the differences? Who's doing what? But they have, one of the things that I observed was my lot of look really good. I understand they weren't in pads, but he looked trimmer. Mm hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's Dickerson obviously is their left guard. That's already done. Kelsey's mm -hmm. their center. Jurgens came in. Same Allo ran with the ones at right guard. Uh, Lane Johnson, of course, is a right is a right tackle. Uh, Diller looks in great. He looks good. He's bigger physically. He, you could clearly see he looks he's com completely different from two years ago when you you're like, dude, you got to get stronger. Yeah, you know. Oh God, uh, he with that offensive line mastermind. So. Uh you know, committee that he's got there or business he's got there. I mean, he is in great, great, great shape. Oh, Dillard? No, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said Blaine. No, no, Dillard. Dillard. Yeah. Dillard. No, I'm no, not Dillard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Dillard. Oh, look, I, I could believe Dillard's a, a better player than when they drafted him. I mean, he's certainly – I don't – it's hard to say from a person – not a mentality standpoint where he's at because he just hasn't played enough. I mean, he tells us – that he's a different player than this first year. He's more confident, more. I mean, he he did struggle last year in camp. Yeah, he played well in the last preseason oh, I remember. game. Yeah. They schemed some things, had him doing some quick outs and quick passes and getting out on the screens. But, you know, Josh Sweat was taking his lunch every day he used to, early and, in training camp. So he, he, I don't know, but he's so like, to your point, he certainly a, has put the muscle mass on. He looks like a big but a lot of guy. On. Yeah, he looks good. Yeah, he the, the term that I got, uh, from last summer, he was on his, his his rear end too much, which means he got he got thrown to yes. the ground, trucked. That's yes. not good. When, when you got that, this you know Trey Turner, who's now with Washington. Yes, he used to be elite. He used to be one of the best courts in football. He's he shouldn't be. If he's he, he may wind up starting for Washington because uh, John Matsko had him in Carolina. Right. He's a shell of what he once was. He's now been with four teams in four years. <laughs> um, the the problem from coaching tape from people who scouted Trey Turner is on his butt too much. Yeah, I means he's getting thrown to the ground. He just doesn't have the anchor that he used to have and and the feet. Mm -hmm. So the hope is with Dillard that he's put all this this and the technique is better. Obviously, you, it's one thing to put mass on, but if your technique's not good, it doesn't matter how much you weigh or how much stronger you are. Right, your technique's got to be better. So it's one thing we'll be looking at. And uh, the good thing is, look, they're they came in very healthy. There's no one uh, who's supposed to be playing a lot. Uh, you know. Jack, I mean, uh, Richard Rogers, the best he could hope for, had he been healthy, is to be the third tight end. Uh -huh. Those are two. There's no competition for it. He's the two. Right. The question is, can Grant Calcaterra, had a, as I mentioned earlier, had a tr terrific catch, who's super athletic, could he kind of regain everything that he had or close to it before the concussion issues? Mm -hmm. Because they, look, he dropped to the six because of the concussions, and he took, you know, he you know, obviously retired and came out of it. So you, you do wonder, can he contribute? Can he push for a rush spot? We'll see. How many mm -hmm. tight ends will they keep? Uh, they, they certainly have some decisions there. But, you know, offensively, uh, the speed is better. There's no question. W w one thing I do want to see, and again, it was only in red zone, so I'm not going to count this. But the one thing I want to see from Gainwell, 
who's one of our breakout players this year, is more explosives, as coaches call him. Mm-hmm. I want to see him line up at X, which he did it at, at uh, Cosell pointed that out to us from his Memphis tape, uh, where he would beat coverage, where they'd run him over the middle from the X position, right. run him on slants. I want this coach's staff, Shane Steich in particular, who's calling the plays, they need to be more creative with this kid. This is a guy they push for, okay? Yeah. It's a fact. So then you got you to make this kid special because he's got, he's got real special talent. He yeah. dropped to the fifth round because he didn't play in 2020. I think playing X in the NFL when you're a running back is, is – I know he did it in college, but, uh, I mean, I would no, like I to see him it. line up in the slot. Or sl- but line out wide if you want to reduce the splits. Yeah. Whatever you need to do. Yeah. You've got the, – the way that Joe Banner told me uh, that you evaluate play cultures, how do they get these guys on linebackers? How do they use them as matchups? It's right. a matchup league. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. They have to get – they had to get this right on the game. Well, I'll be very disappointed in the staff if they can't – if this kid's not special this season. You got to bring the wheel route back. That I too. Seen That's that the in other while, one. You know. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the wheels. The, the, the now. Now here's the question. We'd have to. We'd. We either have to. We'll, we'll ask Greg if he remembers, or we'll ask someone else. Did mm-hmm. they run him on any wheels last year? I, I do wonder about that. I don't recall any. I mean, it's certainly not any that stood out. I used to do it all the time with Corey Clement and and um, oh. Darren Sproles. Yeah. And not only did they do it. I mean, it used to be like a staple. There would be days in training camp where you would see wheel after wheel after wheel out. Oh, they would, and they would kill him on it. And, and, and Boston Scott didn't Boston Scott get the Giants on the Sunday? Oh Sunday yeah, night Boston game? Scott too. Yeah, 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 yeah. That might have been a wheel. And, and I'll say this, Jason Huntley. It, it's it's almost a lot that he won't make it. Right. But he had this run around end, and I'm like, because it's funny. I'm like, wait, what number is this guy? Who is 32? Jason Huntley. Okay, that makes sense. He's really fast. The other guys can't do that. Gamewell's explosive, but he's not as fast as Huntley. Again, I know he's just a fast guy. I wrote this in my my notes piece for our website. Uh huh. But he is so explosive. I just you got to be more than a fast guy. I just wonder if there's any way he could push because they'll keep three and maybe four backs. Right. I don't know that he could find a role here, but you can't teach his, his, his explosiveness. And this is why, from an analytics standpoint, this is a big reason why they claimed off waivers three right. years ago. Was it yes. three years ago? Two years ago? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, because he's been on the team for two years. On yeah. The, on, the, well, on, on the team or practice squad for two years. Yeah. Right, right. So they claimed him in 2020, which is his rookie season. They keep, they keep him here. He's fast, but I, I just wonder if he can contribute. But you can't teach that kind of speed. Do you think they still wind up signing a running back at any time in the next week or two? Because they worked a few out, and they were the bigger, stronger. Yeah, body. they worked out. Hardy. The kid Hardy from yeah. Tiffin, who, who was with Dallas, his big, big guy. Yeah. I don't know Trey Ragus. I don't know him from Louisiana Lafayette. I know about Hardy. He's a, I remember him from Dallas. Those are the – fact, it's funny. The Eagles historically work out – their bottom five in, in, in club workouts for players each year. They just don't work on a lot of players. Mm-hmm. Less – when they have a spate of injuries, then they have to – they're forced to do it. But they just kind of, you know, look – New England looks at it differently. They work out typically the most players per season or right up the top. You know, the top. Right. Uh, right. They worked out three tight ends. They signed one of them, uh, Jaden Graham, who played at Yale, by the way. Yes. Uh, Connor David from Stony Brook. They also had the – did they have a kid from Stony Brook who was a running back from years ago? Oh, no, it was the uh, the Mammoth – they had two kids. Yeah, they had the Mammoth offensive tackle whose name is escaping me now. I mean, he was like – I got 300. it. Michael Bermiro? Michael Bermiro, yes. And then they had the running back who had a, a record year running behind Michael Bermiro there. But I don't even think the running back made it to training camp. I think he oh, was – he didn't. In fact, I remember talking to the agent, and the agent thought that – they, they were going to bring the kid to training camp, and I know they weren't super happy that they cut him, but, hey, the team was right because he never went up anywhere. Right. Um, did, was that right? Did Bamir play with that guy? I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, they played together at Stony Brook. That's cool. So. Cool. That's By the probably way, how they knew about it. I, I, this may be an Andrew DeCecco question. I don't know if you can answer it, but w- w- okay. Tiffin? Where is Tiffin? Is that's that in Tiffin? Ohio. Yeah, I know that's cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is it Tiffin College, Tiffin University? I think it's university. It's in Ohio. That I remember. Yeah. Because there's I'm, been, I'm shocked that you know that. Okay, that's a great job. Only man. because there's a famous player who I, uh, the name escapes me, but who played, <laughs> was a pretty good player in the league. God damn it, why can't I remember? Sorry. I know um, Andrew DeCecco is going to listen to this. He's going to know both the answers. Oh, oh was it, wait, it was a receiver. 
Was it Nate Washington? <laughs> well, I should know this, but I know the stupid stuff. Uh, I can uh, see Chris Berman saying, "Out of Tiffin University," you know. I wonder, and what's their what's their mascot? The Tiffins? <laughs> <laughs> the Griffins? <laughs> yeah, the Griffin, right? The Gri- yeah. Griffin, yeah, Griffins. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Connor Davis from Stony Brook. Lance Lin- Lance Lenor has been in the league forever uh, yep. for like six years. Who's a super duper journeyman, folks? If you look at his transactions and. The immortal Cameron Tom, not Tom Cameron, who yeah. is now an Eagle, at least for right now. I guarantee so, you DeCecco has seen Trey Ragus play because he went to Louisiana Lafayette. So I, I, I would, Raging I Cajuns. Be, I bet that you, um, yeah, he'd be all over that. Yeah. Did you enjoy DeCecco? Did you see his um, trip down memory lane? He did yes, I loved it because I, he, no, I, I, uh, I said something over one of the tweets for promoting it on Twitter. Uh-huh. I said, oh, I got my stuff. Listen to me on um, – football at four i put out my list of with josh uh josh henning and i went over my list of memory lane you would have laughed at, i <laughs> i pulled some stuff out like i don't think i'm not sure even sure you and i've talked about some of this, these scrubs uh who uh oh i hate when you don't, don't call them scrubs you know well, you know i mean the guys are but yeah they're, I know, they're, try, I know. they're try hard guys i mean they I had no chance but it no but but also the one hit the guys who kicked ass and, and they just never made it yeah uh, for, now it might be for a week might for, might be for th- the whole training camp yep but and then our friend rashid bailey who got jobbed by chip he he screwed him over he he clearly won a job mm-hmm. i remember rashid i asked him i said what happened he goes they told me to stay over uh don't go anywhere stay in the area mm-hmm. and he was supposed to be brought back but they never brought him back right and then uh, I guess they worked him out to, when Roseman came back. They worked him out two or three years, years later. He didn't make it, but I'll tell you what, he has made it in the CFL. He's a oh, champion. He's a great CFL player. Yeah. He's a great dude. Love the guy. In I mean, fact, didn't he, didn't, he, didn't he say that he, you know, he's kind of like happy? Like he turned down some some chances with the NFL just to, I, I don't know. I thought maybe, maybe he didn't say that. I well, we, yeah. But... So, so, so Jeff and I ran into him at the, um, at the Maxwell's. Maxwell, Maxwell Awards. Awards. Yeah. Awards. And yeah. he was catching us up on what he's doing. I've known she, uh, gosh, uh, right after he got done at Delval. And, you know, we, whenever I'd see him, we would talk. And mm-hmm. he, he was like telling me, I guess he's 28 now, how much he loves playing the CFL. Because here's the thing that most people don't realize. He didn't really want to go there. And his agent convinced him. And it's mm-hmm. probably like the best thing he ever did. Yeah. Yeah. He's made decent money, and he's a champion, and he dominates. He's doing really well up there. He's a, he's a good football player. I wonder – you know, he talked about, you know, how you learn how it's a business. I wonder if he would ever come back to play in the NFL, if he – well, get a chance. To yeah, I think he's – well, it's, I thought he was older than 28 now. Is that all, is that all he is? I'll only look him up. I have to check, but I thought he was a little bit um, older side. But, yeah, it would be yeah. interesting to see if he, if he would want to take that opportunity and – 28 yeah. has that okay Actually, so that's not too old yeah you, it's funny you say it his birthday is tomorrow happy birthday Rashid Bailey yeah. he's the best <laughs> such a he's one of my favorite guys he's just his energy and his passion he might do media when he's done he'd be uh, great at it he'd oh I would love him because he because he knows his Eagles he knows a lot of guys with Eagles still sure I mean Anyway. All right, so we've gotten uh, uh, one quick question I had from your observations because he's, sure. Jason Kelsey didn't he was there but he didn't practice as he's progressing. Yeah, from wearing his COVID the recovery. So so Cam Jurgens was the first team center. Yep. Yep. Um, I, and again, I know there's not a lot of trench battling going on, but anything stand out from Cam Jurgens having a it didn't notice. There? It could, okay, no, it, it, you have to see it, it's hard. Right, you got to be looking at the the. the I get. I to, I totally understand. Plus, and there were get, were there any eleven on elevens at all? Or was it all just seven on seven? There was very little, but remember, because there's no, there's really no, very little contact. Right, because they're not in pads yet. Yeah, there there was really the seven on seven. They they did a they did some pass rush, but it because it's not being timed. You didn't see the clock in the back of the end zone. Because you'll you'll see that next week when they when they're out of the ramp up period. Right, I assume. Because right. you'll definitely see, as you know, you see the training camp, and they they're gonna blow the play dead if you don't get the playoff. You know that's right. that's what they, we, I want to see. All the all the positive stuff we've heard from sources on Hertz. I want to see what happens when the clock runs. Mm. I want to see how he plays because that I've learned my lesson of doing this thing for twenty years. I've been fooled before, and I'm not. No one's lying to us. It's just that okay. I want to see it when it matters. I want to see it when you're timing the down. I want to see it 
when he's flushed, as you as you and I've talked, does he bail or is he does he wait? Does he throw the ball away? Like how does he do it? Right. He had a pick, a, you know, he had a pick in the practice, which he threw across his body because he had to get rid of it. Uh, I, I don't, it's not a big deal, but uh, I thought he had a decent practice. He certainly made some good throws. He was mm-hmm. hanging in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sinet was before strong. Oh, they kind of rotated. I could not get a good, I was looking to see how strong set up from his knee because that's at the senior ball. He looked, he didn't look good with right. his knee. So right. I'm, I'm going to, something we'll, we'll keep an eye on. We'll check on that. A fi- on offense, pretty much it because again, it was 57 minutes. Uh, that's it, unless you have a question. No, uh, no, that's pretty much it. So here's the deal they're, they're off today, Thursday. Oh, well, not, they're not off. They're having a walkthrough, walk which is um, close to the media. And then just so that we're all on the same page uh, before our next pod. Why does it have to be? By the way, why does it have to be close to the media? I don't know. It doesn't have to be. It's just that it's allowed to be. So they yes. take the opportunity. Oh, okay. To not invite yes. them. They could invite them. Yes, yeah, they're they doing it. Yeah. yeah. I just don't understand, like, what – I don't know. I, I Maybe it's because of the, it's an install for game one. You know, they're, they're running game one place. Who the hell knows? I just yeah, I'm it. doubting that. <laughs> I don't know, early. but it just – whatever the – I just find it funny. Well, I, 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 okay, so you're saying – Anytime it's, I know where you're going here. Anytime yeah, it's any, they're taking every opportunity yeah. they can to not have the media watch. That's well, that's well here, here's something interesting. Okay. Okay. So I was talking to an NFL offense coordinator. His team is going to be, they're going to have a joint practice with the team this summer. Mm-hmm. And he goes, he loves the, he likes it. I asked him, I said, Hey, what, you know, I, some coaches like them, some don't. He goes, I love them except for one thing. The two things, he goes, actually, two things. He doesn't like that the media, can report what they see because fans are there he goes well we're running certain stuff because we're running against a different opponent Mm -hmm. because i I just don't like them being able to see the stuff and chart it and he goes number two this is interesting i've never heard this before he goes you have to trust because they get they're able to take practice our opponent that Mm -hmm. they don't share that tape i'm like i'm like i get it i was like i said this guy do you really think that teams would do that he goes Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Well, they're not supposed to. It's an honor system. Mm-hmm. But you get to tape practice, but don't show anyone else the tape other than your team. Right. Because they're getting access to your plays. So I thought that was interesting. I'm like, I never really thought of that. I'm like, okay, I hope. I was like, I, I guess the honor code there, uh, you know, nobody <laughs> would take advantage of that. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, they shouldn't anyway. Why would, a, why would a team try to help another team? But I just, okay. You know, I thought it was interesting to mention that. All right. Um, so that would be offense. Defensively, you know, I mentioned multiple fronts. Yeah, Fletcher Cox. Yeah, wow. He also had COVID. He yeah. Had, apparently said he was he was struggling a little bit with it, but uh, they let him get some individual work in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony Harris also was dealing with it. Uh, again, there are no protocols anymore. So I guess there's some sort of ramp up here. They allow you, as you're coming back from it, depending on how – obviously, you have to have a negative test. You can't just go out there without having a negative test, but you have to feel a certain way. Right. So it's something we'll keep an eye on. Um, let me see. What else do we have? I mentioned that. Oh, Jordan Davis. Oh, my God. He, uh, I, they, when they played at 34, he was the nose. Mm-hmm. I, I, because it was away from me, I could not say if he was shaded at all. Mm. But he, and I, I, I know he's down in some weight, but he didn't shrink. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember? Are you sure? <laughs> I know, I know. But here's one for you. Do you remember Antonio Dixon? I think his name was. Of course, yeah. He was yeah. a mountain. He was built like um, the guy, the the former Vikings D tackle and Chargers D tackle. Name escapes me right now. Oh, I know who you're talking about, but I can't. The I biggest can't. human beings I've ever seen. But... Not Henderson. No, uh, what was his name? Linville Joseph. Wait, no, because no. yeah, Linville Joseph. Oh, I thought you were talking about Pat Williams. There was Pat Williams and Kevin. No, Williams no, no. That guy was ninety three for the Vikings. No, I'll tell you who it was. I'm drawing him. I'm going to get it right now. Hang on, I'll tell you who it is. Probably it Linville was. Joseph because he's also. No, it was Linville Joseph. I'm right. I got yeah. that. I I almost screwed him up with someone else. Uh, yeah, Linville Joseph. I met him at the Super Bowl. One of the biggest human beings I've ever seen. <laughs> he is huge. Jordan, now, now watching Jordan Davis again. Now, this is an observation here. Okay, so the play's away from him. Mm-hmm. You know, running back takes it. It might have been Sanders. And watching him run 
at 340, I didn't I don't know what he weighed in. Guys who are as big as him don't move like they're not supposed to move like this. They're not <laughs> I, I've seen big guys move before. This is I know it's very minor, but you just you kind of see him. Remember, his 10 was really good. Right. Which is that's the only thing that matters in timing is the 10. Right. Uh, coaches will tell you that Joe Banner told us that he 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 goes for, he he thinks it's pathetic. Remember Joe being very angered why coaches care about anything but a ten for lineman. Mm-hmm. Ten for as quick as is everything. If you right. if you're a D lineman, you have to run more than twenty yards. This is ridiculous. <laughs> no, you know? yeah. but no, um, he's a freak of nature, man. He will oh, be fun to watch. Yeah. He's uh, he's an amazing player. Uh, the the thing that you see now again oh oh we had the nugget two months ago about brandon graham yes i you know i doubted it when i didn't doubt when we heard it i was skeptical i'm like yeah but it's it's off season they're not asking them to do a lot right i watch him change directions on wednesday i was like okay i'm convinced i mean it's true <laughs> <laughs> i mean i saw him bg and i had a nice talk at uh, the golf event mid pet banks event uh two or three weeks ago playing a little golf he looked great i saw him move around and you know, we, uh, he, he looked good. He, I, I, I was like, all right, let, let me see it in practice on the grass. And he's got to move because he was practicing. And as he confirmed to the media, he's got no restrictions. All right. I can't all remember. Right. Do you know if any guys coming off an Achilles? I mean, I know it's been, I mean, it was it 10 months, whatever it is, but just to, to see him move around. And he was moving around like this, apparently. Well, I mean, crazy. Brandon Brooks would be probably a good example. He came back amazingly fast from his Achilles tear. How, what did the how running much? back from what did uh, the running back from the Rams come back from? Akers did, but he didn't look right. He averaged less than two yards per carry. He just didn't look right. Sure, he, yeah, he sure, it out. just to make it back was pretty as impressive. a running back. Yeah, sure, no doubt. Yeah. It was well less than a year. It was like six months. Yeah, months. it's but, crazy what people are doing now to get back. But this guy apparently, we were told like May <laughs> looked normal. Yeah, and I was like, eh, it's come on, let's 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 it's an Achilles, man. This is not an ACL where you could you could you could run in there, you know, right for six months. And you know, James Robinson looks, by the way, incredible from his Achilles. Look, he's running now. He was running straight ahead in May. Now he's you know, eight months. He's uh, stopping starting, looking great. But man, I, I just Brandon Graham's an amazing guy, freak. Of yeah, nature. yeah, definitely. One of the be- all best people ever, and just. uh being around him, I got to tell you, Jeff, at this golf tournament, I, I don't know him that well. I know you've, you've dealt with BG as a beat reporter for many years. I know he's a yeah. great guy, but great spending a, a day with him, being around him, actually a day and a half, was pretty pretty cool. Just And just he's so gracious to fans. And this is, you know, it's a private event. A bunch of, uh, you know, former NFL players, some coaches were there. And just being around him and so positive and this is just the way the guy is. And how could you not feel good about he makes other people feel good? I felt good about myself for a change being around this guy. Yeah, you he's know? definitely he's sort of like one of those Mount Rushmore as far as get like fans, like like a player who really connected with the city. You know, there's always gonna be Dawkins. and I think Jason Kelsey has now reached Dawkins level Vaughn, as far Vaughn. as uh no, no, I'm talking about sort of worship yeah, though. Like oh, the, oh, yeah, there right. was only one Doc, and I think Jason Kelsey has has etched has, has really elbowed his way up to Doc status in yes. the city. Yes, Brandon, I don't know if he's like that, but he's pretty close. He's two A. Okay, if it okay, no, if it's Doc one, Kelsey one A. Uh huh. BG is three two. Yeah, and obviously right? the the strip sack is just of course well, that's right part right. of that. <laughs> Kelsey yeah. and Kelsey, his speech obviously uh, nothing. We'll beat that in the Mummers uniform. I, the guy, I, you know what I love? He's not born in Philly and he gets it. Yeah. He and they, and it. neither was Doc. Doc was. I you know. know not, I yeah. know. I know. Yeah. They, no, they, those they, guys are on their own rarefied air. I don't think there's any, you, could, anybody like him. Could you tell Nick, Nick Castellanos about this? Could, could you get him to understand it? I, I think the word, you know what? I'm starting to think that there's something to the fact that he bought Ben Simmons's house, right? And <laughs> oh, he's got to get out of there. Yeah, I can see yeah. that on, on these social medias, but uh, so so other defensive um, stuff. I'm trying to think, is there anything? Look, we've given him an hour and five minutes here of great stuff. Save it all. Like, we got we we you know. Wanna... No, I mean I kind of emptied it. I mean McPherson's a yeah. three. We knew that. Yep. Um, Tart looks Tart's healthy. You know he, Kevon Wallace ran with the ones because Harris was not working. 
because uh, he's he's you know he's been there longer. Sashre was getting some reps with the twos. Um, sure. I didn't see that people want to know about the young corners. The undrafted were paid a lot of money. I didn't they were working, but I didn't notice anything. Right. Uh, oh, and then uh, yeah, he beat. Uh, I mean, Quez beat Tay Gowan on a. I believe it was Tay Gowan. Okay. Uh, Quez, I tell you what, he's. He, I know. Like they don't see him as a fifty play a game player because they can't now because of AJ Brown. I do wonder because they line him up in the slot so much. Where will they line him up this year? Because Brown and Smith are your outside guys, right? Of course, both could line up inside if you need them to. What do they do? Will they express, expand Quest's role this season? How will they use him? That's another thing we'll be looking into. Yep, but because he is super explosive. He's gotten stronger physically. He's, you know, the maturity stuff, which we outlined two years ago. Uh, you know, what we understand last year, he's really grown. He's, he understood maybe the, the message got through. Maybe the veterans were mentoring him. And, hey, but the thing is, though, before we get out of here, when you've got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith in this room, you better get your stuff together. Yeah. This, this yeah. Room, you dude. mess around, you're going to find out real quick that you don't yeah. belong if you're not yeah. doing this, your, this you're is, not pulling your weight. So, you know, and I'll be honest with you. Just think of it this way. Let me ask you this question before we get out of here. Who would you rather have, Calvin Ridley or A.J. Brown? <laughs> the guy who actually can play this year. <laughs> no, no, but if, I know Calvin Ridley is very gifted. He did not, by the way, he, he did not play great before he took the rest of the year off, and I don't know if he was distracted. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to judge him off last year because I think that that whole team was was screwed, screwed okay. up. I mean, I, I don't know. They're both really good. I mean, they're different. Like one, AJ is small, compact, will run through you. I think um, Calvin, from what I've seen, probably runs a more diversified route tree. Smoother. Probably can yeah. beat you a little bit with his footwork and his technique more, a little more than AJ Brown, but not, not that much. I mean, they're both, re- they're both really good receivers when they're at their best, you know, like, in that, I guess what nine, ten, eleven range. Right? There are really, there are some Ridley, really, really good wide receivers in this league. They're different in the way that they play. Ridley is, I know, Cosell loves Ridley. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now you got see. Now, of course, the other one would be Allen Robinson. The only issue with AJ Brown is uh, in the knees. You know, yeah. the Eagles say they didn't have a problem with it, but I think we're being honest here. Tennessee was offering a certain structure and not a great contract, which would tell you they had some sort of issue. Mm-hmm. so bottom line is he's an eagle he, he's got a chance to be pretty special i'm so curious the way they're going to use him because tennessee had those bang eight plays right over the middle play action for over the middle he wins every single time mm-hmm. or they expand the way that they use him he, here comparative comparatively to tennessee we'll see that is a great question can't wait to f- figure it out all right we'll be back monday morning uh, with a lot of good stuff. Now the Eagles will, are off Thursday again. Not off. Yeah. Walk through Thursday. Then they'll practice. What fr- uh, Friday and Saturday and off Saturday. Yep. Then they'll be off an actual day off Sunday on yep. Sunday. And then we'll have our next podcast on Monday, August first. So we'll recap some of the practices that have gone on. Yep. Um, also, Adam, we've, we've been partnering with Versus Game. It's this really awesome app. It's a game um, that allows you to make money by testing your sports knowledge. Uh, and Ooh. so if you follow us at Inside the Birds on Versus Game, just download the app Versus Game and follow right us now. at Inside the Birds. What, the, what you can do is I, I ask a question, and maybe you'll do it one day or we'll do it together or something mm-hmm. like that, but we've already done two. Where I've asked a, uh, it's a, either a yes, no question or an A, B. There's only two answers, one or the other that you pick from, and you get it right, you can win money, or you can just not win. You can just play as like I just want to test my knowledge and see if I get the questions right. You don't have to bet any money, but you can um, go from a dollar up to a hundred dollars a question. So you, and what they do is versus games kind of pits you versus somebody else uh whoever you oh know, i see oh wow question the other way yeah so it's a pretty cool cool deal which and i'm seeing that but which which one is their app it's called versus game one word v oh, oh one okay yeah one okay. word versus game no space just versus game one word 
and we'll I'll be ba- we basically come out with a new question every yeah. Thursday. So we've already okay. done two. We'll do be one more. And as I look at the schedule here, Adam, I'm going to tease our question. Right, I, like the Eagles are going to practice between this podcast, which is comes out on which is people are listening to mostly today Thursday, and next Thursday, which is August fourth. They're going to have one, two, three, four practices. Do you think the Eagles will practice in pads <laughs> in any of those practices? Will they Am come out with four? I'm not talking shorts and shells. Will it be a fully padded practice? You only get a specific number. I forget what the number is. Do you remember offhand what it is? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. But you only get a, a certain amount. You don't have to take them all, and I'm starting to wonder about Nick Sirianni if he's going to even do that, right? But will the Eagles practice in full pads any of those practices between now and August 4th? That'll be the question that uh, we put up on Versus Game for everybody to answer. It'll either be yes or no. So uh, look forward to hearing responses, and we'll try to have a little interaction. We'll have some fun. We'll see how people respond, and we'll talk about it. Uh, when our podcast comes out a week from now on Thursday. All nice. right. Awesome. So that will do it for this episode of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. Big thanks, of course, to our producer, Tyler Strasser, doing a great job. Uh, and of course, we have to thank all of our great listeners, because as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the birds. <laughs>